Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Kakavos, and I am a product manager and engineer from CyberPower Systems, a global leading manufacturer of UPS systems, inverters, relevant accessories, and anything that is common to power management backup solutions. Today, I would like to help you decide on how to choose the proper business UPS for your company. There are several factors out there and several considerations to be taken into account, but there are some which are the most noteworthy. I try to put this in a single slide as a priority list for the various choices you have. For some of these items, we will make separate videos to discuss the technology trends and to elaborate a little bit more as to the available choices. But very shortly, this is what you should look into when you're choosing the right business UPS for your company. One thing is a form factor. You might want to have a tower, you might want to have a brick type, which can be or not wall mountable, and it can be also a rack type form factor. For most of the businesses, a tower or a rack type are the most common considerations. Secondly, you have to decide the load the maximum usable load. You have to know how many watts your desired equipment consumes and you have to make sure that the rating of the UPS you purchase does not exceed this uh, watt count. Otherwise, UPS will be damaged and it will not be able to serve you properly in case of an emergency as it should. UPSs are rated in volt amperes a good business UPS has a power rating of 0.8 or 0.9 power factor to the volt amperes. For example, a 3000 volt ampere UPS should have about 2700 watts, usable watts. And that's what you should take into account. That will be a premium brand quality UPS. Runtime requirements are also very important. So at your office, you have certain servers, you have telecommunication equipment, you have your phone system, maybe some emergency lights. This have to be able to continue running in case of a power emergency with an automatic switch over. So you must make sure that the average load for these items that you attach to your UPS can be sustained by the watt classification of your UPS. Number four, I put the power signature output. Uh, we will make a separate presentation for that, but there is a step wave, there is a simulated wave and a pure sine wave when it comes to battery output. For an office business UPS, definitely we recommend pure sine wave. Most of servers these days, they are using active power factor correction power supplies, which is something that requires pure sine wave and probably you have other equipment which are in need for such a power classification. This affects the performance, not the performance, but actually the usability of the UPS when it's running on battery mode. Uh, it will work on AC mode, but as soon as you switch to battery mode, it will not work unless you're using the proper uh, power signature output, which is required by your attached devices. Like I said, for a business UPS, a pure sine wave is mandatory. Sensitivity requirement, uh, that's the selection of a topology type. You can choose anything by online, line interactive, or offline. Uh, however, for a business UPS in an office environment, we do recommend line interactive or online topology. We will have a separate presentation talking about the topologies uh, so that you may understand the differences and why you should choose one over the other. Socket types are important. So you might have a uh, deployment of UPS in your office that requires certain sockets uh, which are commonly available, like the ones you use on your um, wall outlets. Or most professional UPS, especially those which are in Iraq, in Europe, and uh, Middle East, Africa, and much of the world are using IEC socket types. So. Uh, this is something for you to know and to think about, depend on the equipment you want to connect. Most computers or servers will work perfectly well with IC socket types as well as power distribution devices. Uh, manageability, or oh, sorry, budget before manageability. Of course, uh, you have to know how much money you want to spend for a UPS system. And you have to take into account several considerations. The total cost of ownership, which includes power consumption, uh, service requirements and the lifespan of the unit are very important for you to take into account. Manageability is important, 
what kind of operating system you're using or operating systems you're using that you want to connect into the same UPS, what kind of controlling software is available for these operating systems, and if you want to have local or remote access to the UPS. Uh, remote monitoring requirement via LAN is also an important consideration. Some operating systems like uh, VMware require a LAN operation for the clients. You might also want to have a remote access to the UPS as an MIS manager from your home or from a remote location. So a LAN with web interface and remote access is very important. Future expansion considerations such as sockets and battery runtimes. It's a very important consideration as well. Today UPS might serve your needs in this present stage of development. After two or three years, you might not need to change the UPS if you have taken into account the expandability factor. You might want more runtime, you might want more load to attach to your UPS so it can be sustainable, and you might want to have more available sockets. So this is something to take into account when choosing a UPS for your business. Serviceability, very important. Can you call service? Can the service be on site? Can it have an express swap replacement? Can it have a good help desk that you can get information for? Ease of battery replacement, is it hot swappable? Does it use standard batteries in the market? The battery type and availability is very important. That determines the speed of replacement, also determines the cost of replacement of batteries. Usually for a UPS, batteries can last anywhere from two to five years, depends on the usage of the batteries in terms of charge cycles and the quality of the battery system. Uh, price performance is a very important factor. Sometimes you might pay a little bit more for a UPS, but you will have a lot more control uh, for the quality and the features that this UPS provides for you. So choosing a, a known brand such as CyberPower, it's always a very, very advisable suggestion. Um, operating noise is very important. Most of the UPSs are inside racks or in some uh, discarded spaces, but yet uh, we have a lot of uh, requirements from most environments that they are designers or people who do a lot of work on you with computers attached to UPS systems, they want a more quiet environment. We will have a separate presentation with regards to noise. The next thing, uh, secondary considerations for choosing the right uh, business UPS for your company can be versatility. Do you want to have USB chargers? Do you want to have an LCD screen? that provides a lot more elaborate information? Do you want to have programmable parameters that decide how the UPS will behave when uh, there is a power outage or under certain considerations? That's a very important factor, although it's not the most uh, primary factor to consider when you make a choice, but it is a very important factor nevertheless. Power consumption requirements and special features is very important. For example, if you're using online UPSs that consume more power than line interactive, uh, this is something that can affect your, affect your annual electricity bill. For one or two or five UPSs, it's not so important, but if you have a big company with many UPSs, of course, it does make a difference. Uh, safety considerations, such as an emergency power off and special notifications that UPS can issue in case of an emergency, and I'm talking about a natural disaster or a, a, like a flood or a fire even, uh, that uh, EPO, for example, the emergency power off can neutralize the entire rack. This is an important thing to take into account if you are in a highly safety standard environment. Uh, environmental considerations, external and internal conditions, sensors, uh, the three temperatures, humidity, and other things might be important for you. And depending on these readings, you might want to take some action, uh, either manually or automatically. This is something also to consider, which is available with business UPSs. Completeness of the accessories. You must have all the cables and documentation, which is required for you to properly operate your unit, connect, and manage to the attached equipment. So that's very important. For rack mount systems, make sure your accessory kit does include a rail kit. Otherwise, you will have a hard time mounting this UPS onto your rack. Um, Looks, <laughs> it's important. If for a high profile environment, uh, you might want to have a UPS that is not so ugly. I mean, some offices, they might be offices of lawyers or doctors, and the UPS might be part of uh, medical equipment or some business equipment, and it is highly visible, so you might want to make sure that it is looking decent enough to match your office surrounding. Thank you very much again for watching and I will come back to you with more information. Thank you.